her club colorway so I'd have enough to make something and this is what it became. But I think they're blending together very nicely and I think mine was a little bit darker so it had a lot more of those chocolatey browns. Here I'll show you because you can definitely see the difference in the cakes. But this shows you that you can make it work. So this one I think was hers and this one was mine. So you can see this one has a lot more of the warm caramels and the chocolate browns and hers has a lot more of these subtle um, pinks. There's like some little pink pops and uh, yellow and a little bit of green. So they just work really nicely together and with alternating them it's great. Very nice. Now I have them tangled with my Cipolla yarn because I threw them in a bag together um, so I could go to the beach yesterday. Um, we all went down to, what's it called, Hamanasset, which is like on the Sound, um, the Long Island Sound. But it's a beach in on the Connecticut side. But it's not on the ocean. It's on the sound, which is a little bit nicer for the kids. They're not super, super strong swimmers since they just learned how to swim this summer. They've only ever done lake swimming. Um, so we didn't want to go where there's quite a strong undertow and current. Oh, it's raining and it's bright outside. So weird. I always think like sunny rain is the weirdest thing ever, but it definitely is raining really hard and the sun is shining. <laughs> um, it's very humid today. I actually popped the air conditioning down so I'd be able to be in this room for long enough to podcast because I have better light in here and all my stuff's in here. <laughs> so anyway, Moretimo, I need to measure this. I feel like I want to do maybe three more inches before I separate for the sleeves. Um, I want it to be longer than my Tanya because the one thing I wish I had been able to do, which I couldn't because I was um, very constrained with yarn, I added an inch to my Tanya, but I wish I had added maybe like two more inches of length on my Tanya. Um, so that the lacy ruffle part was hitting on my hips instead of kind of hitting at my natural waist because I feel like it kind of cuts me off a little bit and it looks more like a flared peplum, um, which those types of blouses don't look great on me. Um, I feel like it makes my torso look very short so then I have like this large chest and then a teeny torso and then this flared out thing. Um, it looks okay and I just have to be careful with what I pair it with for like bottoms or whatever and I tend to like wear it with a tank underneath that kind of hangs out the bottom so that helps visually lengthen me as well. Um, but I do not want to do the same thing on this. I have plenty of yarn so I'm going to make sure I make it the length that I want to make it. I'm also going to lengthen the armholes considerably. Um, on my Tanya, I had to block it to the length of armhole I wanted. And even then, it's kind of tight and restrictive. And I went up two sizes on the armhole. So I may go up uh, three sizes on the armholes for this. I think I will. Because it's fine for it to be a little bit loose on the armhole. Kind of like how this t-shirt fits. But having one that's too tight and that's up in your armpit is it starts to be quite uncomfortable and painful as the day wears on. So I'm very happy with this overall though. It's a very nice mindless project to knit on and I've been kind of carrying it around. This has been my taking to work project to knit on at lunchtime. Those two, oops. Sorry, I hooked my bag on the feet of my table. Okay, and then um, got two 
two more, two more whips. So my northeasterly blanket. Did I show that I finished my green strip? I feel like I did. Anyway, my green strip is done. I've got this much left on the yellow strip before it will also be the same length. And I'm knitting on this every night for a little while. Um, so I finished adding in this one, which I took this off of my uh, glittery blanket of unicorns and magic because it was too bright. But it fit really great into this blanket. So this is the egg colorway from No Makers, and it's on the Sparkle Gnome base. And this is a little s'mores cupcake from Simply Serving Handcrafts. She's doing some so cute um, Halloween stuff. Then this is a little mini I got last year in the mini skein swap that Anna and I do at Advent time. So I knit that onto there and I like that it's got all these different yellows in it. And then I started adding this one in. I think this one is No Makers as well. I feel like it's one of the ones from the coffee set that I got, but I don't remember which coffee it is. There was like Aztec Mocha. I don't know. Anyway, this is what it looks like in the skein. So it's a very pale yellow with um, brown and tan. And it does almost like a self-striping thing in at least this small of a stitch count. So I'm gonna finish knitting that one in. And then I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do next over there, because a lot of the yellows I have now are very bright. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna add in next. And then this one kind of looks almost green. I was thinking about maybe this one. And that is on one of the beautiful laser cut bobbins from uh, Patricia, who's P410, or Nitography. So I don't know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe one of those two. Yeah, because this one is really green. I'm kind of running out of yellowy um, mini skeins, which is sad. But, you know, I'm working on my yellow so faded. Ooh, or I have this one, which is kind of pale yellow, semi-solid. I think this one's from Anna as well. because She puts hers on these little, um, it just kind of cuts some cardboardy paper, almost like cardstock, and winds them on there. But this one has seen better days. Um, so I'd have to rewind it. So that is my northeasterly blanket, which is a pattern by uh, Melissa, who's Skananigans. And I believe that, nope, one more. I worked a little bit on this one. There were a couple of mornings where it was actually cold and it made me so, so uh, excited for fall to come because I remember how much I enjoyed um, having the windows open and we've been able to have them open a little more frequently uh, the last week or two here. It's starting to cool off and usually from, I don't know, like mid to late August through the end of November, we're trying to keep our windows open as much as we can and not run air conditioning or heating or anything like that. So that's when I start pulling out my blanket. So this one is a really old whip from the beginning of when I started my podcast. And um, I, miss, I miss doing a giveaway for my uh, four year anniversary. So 
I don't know, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to let that pass by and just hit you guys on the five year or what. Uh, we'll see what happens. But essentially I picked it back up. This is the 10 stitch blanket by Frankie Brown. Knit out of some yarn that I salvaged from a like yarn stash dive that my mom's knitting group had. Um, they usually have them during the weekend of wool gathering. Or at least they used to. So they all used to get together and they kind of have a lot of stuff that they do around that weekend. And there was one year where I actually was able to go to some of that stuff and I stayed over at my mom's house. Megwin was, um, yeah, I think Megwin was like five and Joshua was a baby when I got this. It was knit into half a sweater and um, that sweater was really heavy. And then all the rest of the skeins completely unwound were sitting there. So it is Cascade Yarns Eco Duo, which is a 50% alpaca, 50% wool blend. Um, it's in all natural colors. So various different uh, charcoal grays to white, It's very marled. So this is all the natural, how this, um, shows up. This is the zebra colorway is what it's called. Um, I believe it's a discontinued yarn. If you know of anywhere that sells it, well, let me know because I think I would like one more skein. I bought one skein um, when it was still being produced and now I can't find any more. So I think I'm just going to have to knit whatever that final skein is and then this blanket's going to be the size that it is. Uh, so I've been knitting on this for four and a half years or so. Um, so the Meg one's going to be 10 this year. And I have done it all with a size 7 needle. I use just double points. They're clover bamboo needles. But I find that for 10 stitch blankets, double points are the best because you're just working back and forth over 10 stitches. And even if your needle falls out, it's very simple to pick up the stitches. Not a big deal at all. So you start at the center and work your way out and you just keep going until the blanket is the size that you want it to be. Um, so as I said, I have one more skein of yarn after the one I'm working right now. And so I'm getting close. And Anna had asked if I was still knitting the blanket or if I finished it and just hadn't shown it. I'm still working on it. But it goes away in the summertime because it is heavy. Well, all winter I just put it over me and I kind of will just knit a little bit on it in the morning. Um, so I'll stand up so you can see it. It's touching the, it's touching the floor right now. And it's about a chest height. There's the center of it. Yay! So, um, it's just going to be however big it is. This blanket probably would have cost me $200 if I had bought the yarn for it. But since it was just free in a de-stash, um, I would never have made this into a blanket. I would have felt like it was too precious to buy to knit into just a blanket to put on the couch, but um, it was free, it went to a good home, and I will love it for years to come. Um, yeah, I would just like it to be long enough so that I could have it up on my neck and it would cover my feet. So I think I need maybe three more times around. And I think that might require one more skein to do it. Um, so this is what I have left of this skein. And then here's my last skein of it. You can see that super fuzzy halo. <laughs> it is really fuzzy. So I said Cascade Yarns Eco Duo. It used to retail for around $19 or $20 a skein. Yep. 
And I think I got 10 skeins from the um, yarn stash dive. And this is my 11th skein. So I think I would like it to be 12 skeins total. I really need to wash this bag. I might take this out and just go wash it. I sewed this gigantic bag just for it. So that is all that has lived in this bag for years and years. This is two fat quarters sewn together, not trimmed at all, um, with two coordinating fat quarters of like polka dots with little um, leafy things. I really liked this whimsical, fun stuff. I got these uh, fat quarters at Tuesday mornings. The whole bundle of them was like $4 or something like that. but. It was too enormous for any other project bag. And then I can at least zip it up and keep it reasonably safe. I keep cedar blocks in with it because I don't want moths to get to it. But this thing has been through a lot with me. Um, It went to the hospital with me when Megwin had her accident and I knit on only this for 30, the longest 36 hours of my life. So anyway, 10 stitch blankets. I highly recommend them. I love them. My glittery blanket of unicorns and magic is a second 10 stitch blanket out of fingering weight yarn. I haven't worked on it in a while because the Northeast really kind of captured my attention, but I will get back to it eventually. I'm still gathering glittery yarns for it. So if you ever have glittery yarn scraps that you want to get rid of that are sort of neutrally or not super bright um, tones, I will happily take them off your hands. Uh -huh. Okay. So, um acquisitions and I will pause here so I can go get the mittens because I do have one more whip. Okay. Um, so these mittens I'm working on for my sister. It's her Christmas gift from last year. Um, I stalled out a little bit on these mittens but this is the Marit mitten by Skein Deer Knits. I'll come closer. I knit them out of Blackberry Yarns Classic DK, which unfortunately they have discontinued. It's a, was such a great workhorse, affordable yarn, and I'm really sad that they discontinued it. And I wish that they had um, discontinued it at a time that I could have afforded to buy um, a lot more to stock up my stash because I really love the mittens that it makes. They're so warm. Um, it was, I think, a wool and spun yarn, so they're very light, and it came in a ton of colors. But I do have a little bit of it left over, so the um, the light blue is the Black Yarns Classic DK, and then the green, the olivey green, is Black Yarns Tweed Country, I think, or Country Tweed DK in the olive colorway. So I do have some other shades of that tweed. And this is the inverse color palette of the mittens that I knit for Kristen for her Christmas present one year, which were the Cabello mittens. And I knit those with the olive background and the blue as the contrast color. And this is what I had left over from those mittens. So I flipped the color palette to make these for my sister. So here's the first one. These aren't blocked yet. So they'll look a lot nicer once they're blocked. So I've done everything on this one except for the thumb. Really? So there it is. And then I finished the second mitten other than the thumb as well, but there's a problem. So I finished it, I was ready to close it up. I was just looking at it because sometimes I stop and look at it and see what I think. And I was looking on the palm 
And I went, what the heck happened there? Let's see if I can show you. There. I got like off by a stitch or two. I don't know what happened. Probably my children happened. So anyway, it's really apparent. So now I have to rip that back, which irritates me. Because at first I was like, oh, maybe I can duplicate stitch it. But that's a lot of duplicate stitching to fix that. And frankly, like this is probably an hour's worth of knitting. So I need to just rip it back and do it right because they are a gift. So um, I don't want them to be screwed up. But that makes me mad because I was essentially done with them and ready to close up the top. And we're back. So anyway, I have to rip back to like there and redo that. And that makes me mad. So they've been in a little bit of a timeout. But... I will have them done before Ryan back so that I can give them to my sister when she comes to visit and she can take them home or she can wear them during Ryan back if it's that cold. Sometimes it is. Or so I've heard. It was cool. Last year when I went, um, I wore my so faded, my peach one with the long sleeves and I was comfortable and I also had a, a shawl on. Um, I didn't need a coat, but, you know, that was enough that it was, I would have been happy for some hand warmers, I think. So anyway, let's hope that it's cool like that and we can enjoy some nice fally weather. So I have this much left of my uh, lacquer, which is good because I'm going to need that for both the thumbs. This one I was a little bit worried I was going to run out of, but um, since I've finished both mittens now, this will be plenty for the thumb contrast. So that is really, for serious, my final whip. Um, and then I bought some things. Um, so acquisitions, I think I told you about like two months ago um, when Hey Sister Yarn Co. announced that they were discontinuing their business, their yarn tying business. They did one final pre-order where they just put up that you could pre-order yarn. And um, it was like a limited quantity of them that they would take. And then that was going to be it. So I did pre-order two sweaters quantity of yarn and um, any order over a certain size they included a little pin so it's like a little wooden laser cut heart. I think Tabby has a laser cutter because she was also making like baby sock blockers. So um, the first one I got, this was a colorway I'd always had my eye on, but I never, things never aligned where I was able to purchase at the time when they were posting updates. So this is their perfectly pink colorway on the Alonzi base, which is just their basic, I think 7525 Merino Nylon. It doesn't actually list it, but... Um, the stats are on Ravelry, so I've put these into my stash, and of course I will link them in the show notes as well. Um, so that was one of them. And then the other one, no surprise, is gray, because pink and gray are kind of my jam. And this one is also on the Alonzi base, and this is favorite tea. So it's just a perfect, like, super pearly light gray. And I think this is going to be another Tanya sweater, but in the length that I want and with potentially longer sleeves. So mine are quite short like this, and I would like them to be maybe three quarters sleeve so that I could wear it um, going into the colder months. I think it would be really pretty if I held it double with mohair, but I can't afford to get that much mohair. I have some left from my, um, what do you call it, 
sparkling cider hat that I test knit for Kristen in the wheat colorway, which would be really pretty with this, but I don't have enough for holding double with the whole sweater. So anyway, that'll make a really pretty tan. Yeah, it'll be nice and neutral, and I think it'll be nice to have one that'll have three-quarter sleeves, and I will make it longer, and I will also make the arm scythes deeper so that it doesn't squish me on the arms. So that's my plan for this one. This one, I don't know, but gosh, I love that pink. I love that pink. So that was my purchase that finally came in. It took, I think, two months to get it. Because I know they were, you know, they're trying to fit it around all their children. And they were back to dying out of their um, dye shed. They gave up their studio that they had rented. And their husbands went back to work, so they used to work with them in the business so yeah I knew that it would take a bit for it to get here but it's beautiful and worth the wait absolutely so that was those two kind of an acquisition from a while ago but I just received it um, and then I also am going to participate in Kristen's sew along for the Brumby skirt so I ordered the Brumby skirt pattern um, from Megan Nielsen Patterns, and it's an Australian pattern company. So um, it's an indie pattern company from there. And as part of that, it comes with three versions. So this is version one, which is kind of the short version um, above the knee, includes pockets. Version two is midi length includes pockets and additional fullness and version three is a basic knee length gathered skirt without the pockets. So I'm going to make this one the longer one with the pockets and I'm going to do it out of this fabric. So this is fabric I got from my mom um, when she was de-stashing a lot of her fabric. It's a uh, teal colored um, linen cotton blend. Um, so it'll be nice as a summery skirt. I can't get it to come apart. Maybe that's, that's a, yeah, okay. Um, so it's a really nice fabric. I need to wash it and press it because it was sitting in a trunk for a little while. But I think that'll be a really nice skirt and it would look pretty with a uh, black top, white, or potentially with said gray Kenya. That'd be really nice. That's part of it too. My Kenya is that really nice mauvey color, which does match some things. Um, it looks really nice with black. It looks good with jeans, but I would like one that's even more versatile. That's like gray. So I could wear it with, with uh, colored bottoms. So that's my plan for the Brumby skirt. So I think she's, um, you know, got a thread open for the sew along, but she's working on editing the footage to put up for that sew along. So it'll have, you know, step-by-step -step videos of how to go through it. And then they'll have support from other people that are uh, also sewing it in the thread. So if you're interested, there's still time. And then, because it was coming from Australia, I wanted to make the shipping worth it. I didn't want to just buy the one pattern. And if I'm going to order from this company, I'm probably only going to do it once for right now. She didn't have a, a huge collection because um, it's an indie pattern designer. So that makes sense. They kind of just put out a collection at a time. But I got a jeans pattern. Um, so this is the Ash jeans and... Um, it's a stretch jean pattern set, so it has four different cuts and multiple lengths for tall, regular, and cropped. And then um, it has a comfortable rise, so it's not high-rise jeans, which I don't like. I do not like high-waisted jeans. They don't fit me right. They don't. <laughs> 
I had to wear high-waisted jeans in the 80s and I don't want to go back to them. So normal rise for me or low rise all the way. And I like a good boot cut. So these are skinny jeans, but this comes with a boot cut jean. So there's the four versions. So this would be a boot cut right here. That's a straight leg jean. And then there's a uh, skinny jeans. So this is typically the cut that I wear um, when I pick out my jeans. Uh, my two current pairs of jeans that fit me, I purchased after I lost the baby weight from having Megwin and before Joshua was even a twinkle in our eye. So when I returned back to work after having Megwin, I bought two pairs of jeans um, from New York and company and I've had them ever since. So they are 10 years old almost at this point. And one of them has like a stain on one leg. So I unfortunately can't really wear those to work anymore. Um, so I kind of have one pair of jeans that I'm wearing all the time. And my, uh, my work is casual dress 90% um, of the time. Like I can wear dresses if I want to, and I do wear them um, just because I enjoy them. I wear dresses and skirts in the summer. It's also cooler. But in the winter time, my staple wardrobe is jeans and a sweater, especially now that I have all these great hand knit sweaters. So I wear lots and lots of jeans and sweaters. So I kind of would like to do a stretch pair of jeans to go with my sweaters. And I would really like if I could get some, um, I saw some stretch denim fabric at Joann's that had like little teeny polka dots all over it. And it was so cute. And I thought, ooh, if I could learn how to sew jeans, I would love to have a pair of jeans that are like that. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will go to Affordable Fabrics where everything's $2.99 find some stretch denim fabric to practice with, make a pair of practice jeans, and then potentially go back and get um, the polka dotty jean fabric. Or I might just go get it so I have it, but I won't ruin it. Um, and then I'll make them into this. So anyway, ash jeans pattern. Um, also as part of that, they sell little notions kits for the jeans. And you can get them in nickel, copper, or brass. So it comes with the zipper, the button, like the snap for the top. Or sorry, it is a button. It's not a snap. The button for the top part and all of the rivets. And it also has a little leather tag. I'll get out. For you to sew on. That says Megan Nielsen patterns. I made these. So you can add all the fun accessories to your jeans to really make them be polished and finished. And um, this is again something I wouldn't buy on its own, but since I was already paying shipping, it is a tiny, tiny anvil. And this makes me think of the Gilmore Girls episode at the beginning where Lorelai is kind of going off about, but where are all the anvils? And she goes, she says something about um, something which was once so ubiquitous that it was in children's cartoons and everyone knew what it was. And now you don't see anvils everywhere. Um, so anyway, I have a tiny jeans anvil that's for installing those rivets. It's pretty beefy for being so small. And my husband also makes some stuff um, where he's used rivets for like bags and things. Um, so I figured it'd be useful. It wasn't very expensive. It was only like $3 or something like that. And adding it in with the pattern and everything, um, the shipping wasn't so bad. But like I said, I never would have bought that by itself. and shipped um, but as part of a pack it was fine we got the ash pattern and then um she also designs children's patterns so she has a couple of um i think they're girl patterns because they're a little more feminine in some of the details but um i probably could use the leggings for either one of them and I don't know if I've ever seen a men's tee with a high-low hem. So this 
probably be just for Magwin, but I could omit the Hilo hem and potentially use it for Joshua as well. Um, so this is a uh, sweater tee pattern, but I guess they call sweaters, they call sweatshirts, what we would call a sweatshirt in the United States, sweaters, uh, because they were clearly made out of like French terry fabric. Um, so it's a looser fit, high scooped front hem, low curved back hem, has options for different sleeve lengths patch pockets, elbow patches, applique templates. So that will be nice to make a couple of cool little sweatshirts for Megwin and um, also some tees when she gets a little bit older. She has a lot of t-shirts right now, but she is starting to grow out of some. So as she grows out of some, and um, I usually have leftovers from sewing dresses that I could make into t-shirts. Joshua has a lot of clothes, so while it seems like I'm always sewing for Megwin, it's because we had a close friend um, who lives in Ohio who had um, a son that was a year older, maybe two years older than Megwin, or not Megwin, than Joshua. Um, so we got all of the things that he grew out of. So we always had just this influx of all of this clothing. And then our neighbors also have a son who's um, a couple of years older than Joshua. So again, they have a girl who's older than him and then a girl who's younger than him, but they don't have another boy. So they gave us a bunch of clothes too for Joshua. So he's had like coats pants, shirts, like so many that I don't even know what to do with them all. So I have not focused on sewing for him, but now um, we don't have an influx of pants for him, but he's uh, too tall for some of his pants. So I will sew him a couple pairs of pants for school. Um, the next thing that came in this bundle is this one. It's called the Mini Tanya. So this is culottes. Um, so they look like a skirt, but they actually have, you know, a hidden center portion. So they look like a skirt, but they're actually like shorts. So we've got a shorts length, which is this one, a knee length, and a midi length. Knee length and a midi length. So this will be really fun to play around with. Um, it can be really fun to do in like some quilting cotton because it does call for cotton, voile, batiste, crepe, lawn, rayon, linen, and chambray. So I can have fun with a lot of um, quilting cottons for that. And then the last one is the mini Virginia. So this is a leggings pattern. It also includes fun ways to do knee patches or knee appliques. And Megwin wears a lot of leggings, so it'll be nice to be able to, again, make some for her out of left jersey fabric from um, dresses or shirts that I sew. Um, so yeah. Like that rose fabric, for example. I could make her a pair of fun leggings out of that with a plain black or red t-shirt. That'd be super cute. Um, and then I bought the pattern for the stone crop pullover, which is a new pattern that Andrea Mowry released. I sign up for her newsletter and usually she'll give you a really good discount code as part of being a subscriber to her newsletter. Um, so I got, I think it was 30% off or maybe 20% off. Um, and I'm going to use yarn that's in my stash that I bought last year at Rhinebeck. I don't know if I brought over all the tags or not. Yes, I did. The first one was some plant dyed yarn from Fibercraft Studio. And it was, um, I think it's indigo dyed. It's not marked on here, but it was a yarn baby for sure. So it was 1,022 yards. The pattern actually calls for a bit more, but it has bobbles all over and I'm not going to do the bobbles. Um, I already have a bobbled all over sweater. I don't need two of them. 
Um, so I'm just going to do a purl stitch instead of the bobbles. I think it'll still look really cute and it will eat up a lot less yarn. Um, a thousand yards is usually plenty for me to make a sweater for myself. This one also has color work in it. Um, so I think omitting the bobbles, I should be good. I could do three quarter sleeves. Or if I really wanna do all the way, um, I do have a skein of Gabby's yarn that's similar to this, but with sparkle. So I could use that for the neck band, the cuffs and the bottom um, ribbing of the sweater. So there's the tag for that. So like I said, it was 1,022 yards for 49 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. And I got it at Rhinebuck last year. Um, they had a lot of really great um, yarns. So if you are going to Rhinebeck, I would definitely suggest checking out Fibercraft Studio. She had some um, wool mohair blends that I was sorely tempted by. There was a pink one that I kept coming back to, but in the end I went and got um, blue. This was one cake, but when I was cutting the, um, the ties on it, I cut one of them and I realized it wasn't waste yarn, it was actually the yarn. So that ended up making me have to wind it into two cakes. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna knit from this bigger one and then this one is the one I'll use for the sleeves because I wouldn't have alternated since it's all one gigantic cake of yarn. So I'm not gonna alternate, I'm just gonna go with it. Mm, it smells so sheepy. So this is just 100% um, non-superwash merino. Like I said, it is uh, indigo dyed. And then I'm going to use it with the two skeins of spin cycle yarns that I had purchased last year at India Untangled. I was originally going to make a hat out of them, but um, spin cycle yarn's a little pricey, so I kind of felt bad that it was going to be such an expensive hat. One of the things I like about the stone crop pullover, though, is that it doesn't require very many of the, the uh, spin cycle skeins, and I actually already have them in my stash. Um, so I got a skein of Robin's Egg and one of Tangled Up in Blue last year. So this is Robin's Egg. So it's some um, of those bright blues and then like taupey colors and cream. Throwing yarn tags everywhere. And the other one is Tangled Up in Blue. This one's a little more... Just straight up like different blues. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate them in the color work section. So I'll work one color work motif in this and the other one in this. This guy is going to be my background color. So I think they'll both contrast nicely with it and it'll be a lot of blues. Same kind of color palette as my Cipla, but it's going to be a light colored background versus my Cipla is more of this as the main color with, you know, you saw it, you know what it is. Um, so that's my plan. I think it's gonna be really nice. I was gonna say the Cardinal is gone, but I hear it. That's the popping sound I heard. It's the Cardinal downstairs pecking at the basement window. Just when you think it was safe to eat sharp pies. Okay. So that is what I'm going to do for the stone crop pullover. That may be my other Rhinebeck sweater, or it might just be a sweater for me to have because I like sweaters. And the other thing I just wanted to generally share with you is um, I have been trying to make an effort to reduce our um, plastic consumption. And um, as part of that, I'd been looking at um, some different kind of trying out natural products. So a couple of friends of mine um, were using the Lush shampoo bars. So my friend Andrea, um, Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi, um, Hannah, who's Kawhi Bookworm, 
and I believe Jacqueline from Brooklyn Knit Folk. It was like we were talking about them at Vogue Knitting Live. And they were all saying they had tried them and they liked them. So I tried them as well and really liked them. Um, so I actually signed up for a subscription to get them. Um, so the one I use is Honey, I Washed My Hair. So it smells kind of like a toffee honey smell. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty big. Um, and the kids use it as well for their hair. You just like get your hair um, soaked up with it a little bit. It doesn't take very much. And then I have little like, um, they're made out of like extruded plastic leftovers, kind of like they're everywhere and they're little soap dishes. So I had them for quite a while um, to use with Martha's soap, the tough woolen soap. But I have two now that I have in the shower. So one, I have my shampoo bar on. So that's what I use for shampoo. I also use it as body wash. So that's nice. And um, it this is what it comes in. So it just comes in a paper bag. If you can, if you're lucky enough to go to the Lush store, which we do have a Lush store about 35 minutes, 40 minutes away from me. Um, so I do go up there sometimes just to like stock up on some. But if you're lucky enough to do that, you can get them in paper bags. They pack everything in paper bags. Um, so that's cool. And you can sniff them all and try and see which ones you like. So totally not paid for this endorsement, but I didn't know this stuff existed before. And so I thought I would share. Um, I think these are about $10.95 or something like that US. But they last about as long as like two, two and a half bottles of shampoo, I would say. So it's pretty much in line with the price I would have paid before for two bottles of shampoo. Um, and then I don't have to mess with trying to recycle the bottles and not being able to recycle the pump thing and the straw and all that. So. Um, so for conditioner, I've tried two of theirs. Um, I'm allergic to lavender, so there's a lot of their scents and stuff that I can't use because of that. Um, but there are some that are lavender free. So the Honey I Washed My Hair is one of them. Um, the New is another one. It's like a cinnamony clove smell. That one's really nice too. Um, and then this is the conditioner bar. So it's this is the big one and it has a kind of coconutty smell the other one i've used a jungle and that one is like banana and avocado um kind of smells so it smells kind of like a banana avocado smoothie uh, they i asked them about this plastic packaging this is actually like a plant-based product so it will biodegrade um, pretty quickly actually but they said because this has um, coconut oil in it, like they, they wanted to package it in something other than just the bag because sometimes it can melt and transport a little bit um, if it's going to areas that are a little hotter. So it's a solid conditioner bar. Again, you're just gonna like, I do this on my hair and then kind of put it through. You end up needing a lot less than like a normal conditioner. So again, this lasts about twice as long as I would have said um, a conditioner would last for me, like a bottled conditioner. And um, I found I have to wash my hair far less frequently with these. I used to ha uh, do it every other day and I would condition on the off day. And now I'm washing my hair every three days. Um, and it's not oily or anything, and it's really nice. So um, there's that. Then for lotion, this is the one I use. Again, it doesn't have any packaging. So this is the Honey Pot is what it's called. Um, so it has wax on the bottom. So that's what this yellow stuff is. And I've been using this one for about three months. So it was about this tall before and I use it every time I like shave my legs. I use it on my arms 
And then my kids use it as well whenever they're feeling like their skin is dry. So you just like rub it on and as it starts to get a little bit warm, you get um, lotion on. It's really nice. And this one smells like um, citrusy. Now I've got lotion on me. <laughs> and the last thing we switched over to, and I wanted, this is why I wanted to show you because this is the last one I have in the house and it hasn't been used yet, <laughs> is the deodorant bar. This thing has changed my life, people. Amazing. So usually with deodorants, you end up um, kind of using to the end of it and then you have a bit that's inside the plastic applicator that you're losing out on using. So you probably lose like that much product that's inside the applicator that you can't use, which is annoying. Um, so this one is the Tio. They have a couple of others, but again, they contain lavender, so I couldn't use those. Um, but it is a baking soda base. It's aluminum free, this deodorant. So if you care about it, um, if you care about that, it's really good. Um, it does not contain aluminum. Um, but it has tea tree oil. Lime, I think. And um, these corn flour things, they come off pretty quickly, but um, it has a wax bottom, so they just pour it into wax. So that's what you hold as you're ap applying it. Um, it is a little crumbly, I'm not gonna lie, but you get to use every single bit of it. And it works amazingly well. So like, um, it has like the antibacterial qualities. So um, what really makes your sweat smell is not actually your sweat, it's the bacteria that lives off of it. Um, so this like kills the bacteria and it's tingly. So it, I liken it to like gold bond. If you put gold bond powder on, it has that kind of a tingle. So my husband and I both use it now. He switched over to it and he's like a heavy, heavy sweater. Um, and he said it works really, really well. The only thing to keep in mind is that if you wear your shirts like more than a couple of days and you're a heavy sweater, you are going to accumulate some salts. And so it's more visible. And if you're wearing black, you have to be careful, like don't apply it and then put your clothes on because it's kind of powdery and it's gonna come off on them. But you know, you have the same problem with deodorant. So like solid deodorants that are uh, whitish colored. But I really like it. I'm happy that I tried it. Um, it's not super expensive. Again, it is a little more pricey than a stick deodorant, but it lasts about two times as long and you can use every single bit of it. Like down to a teeny little crumble, you can use that and it still works perfectly. And um, if it gets on the counter, I can just like wipe it off and I'm sort of cleaning the counter too because it's baking soda based. I've noticed that it hasn't stained my clothes. I was a little worried that it might stain my clothes. It's not doing that. It washes out really well. It hasn't stained any of my knitwear, wear, which is nice too. Um, so yeah, there's the Lush commercial for you. But, you know, I didn't know about this stuff. I didn't know any of it existed. So I thought I would share with all of you if anyone else is trying to reduce your plastic usage and wants to know of some good products, you can order them online from them. And like I said, I signed up for a subscription which you can switch around like how frequently you would want them to send you stuff. Um, or like I'll go to the store and just stock up on a couple at a time and then I can just keep them in the cabinet. Um, and now I don't have all the silly bottles everywhere, which is nice because we were like recycling a lot. Enough where our recycling only comes every other week and our giant like roller cart for our recycling was always completely packed by the end of those two weeks. And so I want to try to cut down on that a bit because I know like our recycling is getting sent back to us from other countries because they don't want our crap anymore. Um, so we need to reduce it. Um, is that everything I wanted to share? 
yep, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to share. So that was a lot. So anyway, um, I'm going to try to finish up Megwin's polka dotted dress um, sometime this weekend. And that is pretty much all I have in the way of plans. So until next time, spend some time doing the things that you love. Thank you all for joining me and I will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.